For your ears only for the week of March 9th and Daylight Savings Time, I'm David Alpern. I'm Catherine Herzog with this news quote, Enough is enough. That was Republican Senator Charles Grassley of Iowa supporting a bill to have professional military prosecutors, not unit commanders, decide on prosecuting growing cases of sexual assault in the armed forces. But there was not enough support to bring New York Senator Christine Gillibrand's legislation to a vote. Also last week, Brigadier General Jeffrey A. Sinclair, a former top Afghanistan commander, admitted to charges involving adultery and pornography, but could not forestall his trial for alleged sexual assault on a junior officer with whom he was having an affair. And the Army suspended its top sexual assault prosecutor after charges he groped a female lawyer at a sexual assault conference. Now this. This morning... I signed an executive order that authorizes sanctions on individuals and entities responsible for violating the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine. Every time the president goes on national television and uh, threatens uh, Putin or anyone like Putin, everybody's eyes roll, including mine. This is the ultimate result of a feckless foreign policy where nobody believes in America's strength anymore. With fear rising of a new Cold War over Crimea and the larger Ukraine, related politics back home last week grew ever more heated. Though Republicans were hard-pressed to tout non-military responses much tougher than those ordered by Barack Obama, the rhetorical attacks by GOP senators like Lindsey Graham and John McCain on the president's previous foreign policy action or inaction grew ever more shrill as party leaders jockeyed for position and influence in upcoming midterm elections and beyond. To consider both presidential and partisan reactions to the Ukraine crisis and other political developments of the week, for your ears only, we're joined again by Princeton professor of history and public affairs, Julian Zelizer. His books include the biography, Jimmy Carter, Governing America, and Arsenal of Democracy, the politics of national security from World War II to the war on terrorism. Welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me. Republicans blame Obama's restrained response to previous provocations, uh, the terrorist attack in Benghazi, Syria's use of chemical weapons, for emboldening Russian President Vladimir Putin. Now, others say Putin was provoked in part by the policies of past U.S. presidents in expanding the NATO alliance ever closer to Russia's borders, accommodating Russian advances in former Soviet Georgia. What's your view? Putin doesn't need to be emboldened by President Obama uh, this is very much part of who he is, and uh, aggressive posture is something that comes naturally to him. Uh, this is a problem that President Bush faced as well. Uh, so I think there's many factors behind why he's doing this, uh, many internal to Ukraine and the long history between Russia and Ukraine. But I don't think it's, it's accurate. Uh, ultimately to blame things like Benghazi for what's gone on. The immediate provocation for Putin was clearly violent protest in Kiev for closer ties to Europe and against the corrupt regime of Viktor Yanukovych, who finally fled. And the Russians recorded State Department calls about supporting forces for democratic change. What's the lesson there? I think uh, the internal politics and the division within the Ukraine between a, a part that's much more Western and a part that's much more tied to Russia goes back, uh, uh, you know, a long time. Uh, and so these kinds of diplomatic cables can trigger uh, fears in this region and open up these kinds of tensions and internal battles. Would Congress support the cost to American businesses from greater economic sanctions on their trade with Russia? I think they might do so hesitantly, but not indefinitely. Uh, You know, I I think a lot of American business wants to open up this huge market uh, and continue the changes that have taken place in the past uh, few decades. What about greater efforts to have U.S. natural gas replace Russian supplies and leverage? Well, that's an option, but according to all the studies that have come out in the past few days, that will have very limited effect. Uh, and uh, it will be limited in terms of what the U.S. can do and limited in terms of freeing Europe from its dependence on those oil resources. How much impact do you think the Ukraine crisis will have on this year's midterm elections, especially the GOP primaries and the 2016 presidential race? I think it will be limited. This has emerged suddenly, and nor is it an issue that I think will resonate with a lot of the electorate. Uh, It will be a way to talk about President Obama's leadership or the promise of what Republicans have to offer. But I think these midterms will remain uh, midterms that revolve around the GOP, how do you govern the economy, and Obama's health care program. 
How did you read the way various issues were raised at last week's conservative political action conference, uh, where Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell brandished a rifle and Chris Christie continued to stress the importance of political victory as well as principle? Well, it reflected very clearly the division within the Republican Party about what the strategy should be. McConnell, who's facing his own Tea Party challenge, uh, is, you know, relying on the traditional aggressive uh, and, you know, somewhat uh, hysterical uh, rhetoric that some Republicans employ, while Christie is making a different kind of argument and talking about the need for ideas, the need for uh, a positive vision. Both men face political challenges at home, and both are taking very different strategies uh, for what the GOP should be about. I seem to see a lot of conflicting polls. Given all the division within GOP ranks, Tea Party versus more mainstream, how do you see its prospects in the midterms? I think the prospects still lean toward the Republicans. Historically, uh, these midterms, the second midterms uh, a president faces like this, don't go well for the president. Part in power, uh, President Clinton is the only exception. So uh, the GOP still has history on its side. And the polls show that overall the Democrats are still in more trouble right now for the midterms, even with all these tensions that are playing out within the GOP. Do you think Obama's continued delaying mandates of Obamacare is making his health care reform more or less of a target for Republicans? I think it makes it more of a target in that they can argue the president is having problems with the program. They can use the delays uh, as evidence that their arguments were correct all along. Uh, And I think symbolically, it just gives the impression that President Obama is not totally uh, in control or in command of this program that's the centerpiece of his agenda. So I think Republicans in in local races are going to use those delays as evidence of their claim. While nobody can be sure how Hillary Clinton will decide on running for president, everyone, including Vice President Joe Biden, agrees that Biden would be a likely alternative if she doesn't. But you write that political history is against him. Yeah, vice presidents don't do well when they run for office. The only vice president in the 20th century who was able to pull this off was uh, George H.W. Bush in 1988, and then there were a few in the 19th century. Uh, There's a lot of baggage that comes when you're the vice president, and it's very hard uh, to run against, uh, to run to follow the person you've worked with. Uh, You're just seen in some ways as the status quo and you inherit all the problems of the administration without all the benefits. And while Hillary rides highest in the polls now, how do you see her public and private record affecting her potential candidacy? It's going to be a challenge. Look, Hillary Clinton's great virtue is experience, her record, her time in Washington. She very much knows how this place runs, uh, and she can bring that to the table as a leader. On the other hand, all of that is also a vice, because all these stories will come out uh, about what she did in the past. People be reminded of all the scandals, uh, and that is something she's going to have to deal with as she launches her campaign, assuming she does that. Princeton professor of history and public affairs, Julian Zelizer. His books include Jimmy Carter, Governing America, and Arsenal of Democracy. Here's a quote from the news. Deporter-in-chief. That was Latino advocacy leader Janet Merguia deriding President Obama's claim that record deportations under his administration, now nearing two million, were required by law, though he previously found a way around it to keep undocumented young dreamers in the country. Next, the Crimea conundrum. Ages in the making. For your ears only. 